in front of the deacons of the pastors. I, I knew Christianese. I knew when I walked, came around my grandmother, I was, hey, blessed and highly favored. How, how you doing, blessed and highly favored? I learned them things. When I get around my homeboys, what's up? You know, that type of thing. <laughs> Changed my vernacular. As I was growing up, I became curious about different things that were going on in the world, and I looked at uh, the book of Revelations as if it was some type of far off thing. It scared me, but it, it was like, eh, that ain't, that ain't going to happen in, in my lifetime. I'm not going to see any other things that, that are transpiring in the book of Revelations happen in my lifetime. That just ain't going to happen, man. That ain't going to get that bad. Now, you know, I'm, it might get a little bit, but you know, one of the things that the enemy has cunningly and wisely done is he sped up some things. And in speeding up some things, he's not in control because God is still in control. He thinks he's in control. One of the things that he's done is carefully and wisely, but he's not wiser than the church, gotten the church to be a little bit complacent. Complacent with Sunday meetings and just, you know, that's it. And I come in and, you know, I pay my respects and shout a little bit, dance a little bit, but I ain't got to think about it for a whole nother week. I, I ain't really got to be in, I ain't be involved like that. I, you know, I, I, I come in maybe if I, if I do, I go above and beyond and maybe I come in on a Wednesday and, you know, and I, 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 I help the homeless at Thanksgiving time and I, you know, I do my thing, but you know, I, all of that other stuff seems a little bit extreme. That's what they call people who believe in the Bible today. If you believe in the Bible, if you believe what the word of God says about man and woman being the only thing that God, or, you're an extremist. They flip the term so much to where they want to silence you. But God warned us about this. And one of the things that he remind me of, right, reminded me of, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. The reason why, even in my carnalness, I did so much study about different things that were future events, new world order, and, 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 and marks of the beast, and secret society, and the depravity of mankind, and looking at Romans, and, and looking at how are he talking about, you know, people who knew God, didn't recognize him as God, and, you know, homosexuality ain't that bad, and it ain't that bad. Why was I studying all of those things as a young man and trying to figure out the timeline? I was like the disciples. When are all these things going to come? Because the truth be honest was I was scared. I didn't want to bust hell wide open. So that's the reason why I wanted to keep a timeline. Okay, now this stuff ain't happening yet. So I still got a little bit more time to, you know, it ain't going to come during my day. Now, right around the year 2000, the Y2K and everything, I got a little bit. I got a little bit, a little bit fretful. Wait a second now, the year 2000, they talking about this over the end, and Princeton made a song, maybe he prophesied, you know, turned this part over like 1999, yeah. 2000, over with, out of time. I said, hold on now, Prince, I know you ain't no prophet, but you got me scared a little bit. Yeah. But one of the things that has happened as a result of religion Creeping into the church. It's become the sweet by and by. Everything will take care of itself in the sweet by and by. There, there's, no, there, uh, there, there's no duty for us today. There, there's really nothing. We just get together. We get, you know, as long as we, it's, it's us four and no more, we saved and that's it. God says, no, I, I called you to be a trumpet. I called you to sound the alarm. Not everybody wants to hear the sound of the alarm. If you remember, Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the coming of the Son of Man. Yes. Think about it. Noah preached for 120 years, and eight people got on the boat. They estimated that it was close to 77 million. Of course, the court of they, you know, give or take, whatever. Population of the earth was in the millions, but eight people. Today, the message is no different. And the people's ears are no less deaf, blind, and just, they just, they just, it's the church of Laodicea. That's what, that's what age we're in right now. 
Yeah. Revelations 3, 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation, the creation of God, I know thy works. There's nothing that we can really even hide from God. God says, I know your works. Secret, in secret, cover, round the corner, everything. I, I know your works. I, I, I know them. I, I know. Thou art neither cold nor hot. He's talking about the church. He's talking about, they're not talking about us. I'm talking about, because one of the things that the Lord, I thank God for the message that he's given us. But it's so important for us to know and understand what's going on. So that when we're dealing with church folk, we understand the state of mind. Because if you don't, you'll fall into this rut. You feel like, Elijah, Lord, it ain't nobody else on fire for you like this. It, it's nobody else. But God has to remind us, tap us on the shoulder. No, I got some folk. That are awake, that understand what it means to be hot. And if they're not hot, our voice is to be the trumpet to get, get near the fire. Get near the fire. Come out of the corners and crevices of compromise and get close to the fire. I know thy works, thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. See, I'm going to tell on myself, I was lukewarm. Because I know what lukewarm looked like. I, I, I was lukewarm. I listen, I come in and <laughs> Stacy Adams and everything. And, oh, that boy's shy. He even praise the Lord. Amen. Was at the club last night. Can't even keep my eyes open to the dog through the through the, uh, 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 the sermon because I'm so sleepy. I'd have been up to three, four o'clock in the morning. But I'm up in praise the Lord. Amen. Still got the smell of E and J on my breath. Luke on. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't witness to nobody because that was just a little bit too embarrassing to Let's see the people I who who can I witness to? The people that I'm hanging around is the people that I'm doing dirt with. So who am I? To crack over the Bible? Better not crack over the Bible. Talk about Jesus. Now they allow you to pray over your food and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, they allow you to, you know, this is Easter. We can all go to Easter. Everybody understands Easter. You get sharp on Easter, but on Christmas. But you invite one of them jokers any other Sunday. They go, man, what's wrong with you, man? Unless we going in there to chase some girls and they understood that. I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> because, verse 17, thou sayest, I am rich. And increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretch, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. This is my note here. The enemy in their flesh deceives them into thinking they have everything that they need. That there's no room for growth, that they don't need to learn anything else, that the moment you become unteachable, it says the moment you become unteachable, that's what I put there, it's the moment you have succumbed to the enemy scheme. You ever went inside of a church and it was just dead? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just dead. It, there was just no, it was just like, we're going we gonna to start in Matthew. Next week we're going to be in Matthew. Next year we're going to be in Matthew. Or we're going to stay on the Psalms for the next five years. And it's just like, wait a second. There's too much life going on. There's too much circumstances. God has given us a living word. Why is it the word that is being preached or taught applying to the things that are happening right now? Why is it not applying to the things that I face in my life every day? I need a right now word, and truth be told, that's the reason why a lot of people go away from church, because they're living life, and they're saying, I come into the church looking for something, someone, Holy Spirit, that can help me with life, but then I get a stale word, just stale. I could have sat at home and went through the Bible. I used to go to church, and you know, when I grew up, you know, I thank God for growing up, and, 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 and that, that thing had its place. But I used to wonder why the person used to give the scripture reading. But then break nothing down. 
Sister so and so got the scripture reading from, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see here, Matthew, and uh, and you read the scripture, and uh, the Lord said, da 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 da, 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 da she for ten minutes, yeah. put the microphone down and walk away. Yeah. How did I help me? Yeah. I need an interpretation of what it is that you just read and how it applies to my life today. Yeah. I need something to live. I need food. Yeah. I came in here for food. You just showed me a menu. Now that's what you could get. It's some hot dogs and some hamburgers. You walk into a restaurant and all they got is a menu. And you say, okay, I'm ready to order. No, we don't have actually food in here. We just got the pictures and the menu. You can go somewhere else and eat. We just gonna show you the menu and what could be available to you if you was in a real restaurant. But we ain't served food in 15 years. We real successfully get people to come in because we got the nice shiny lights. We got the pictures of the food and the neon lights. That's how some churches are. They're good at bringing people in, but once you get in them chairs, your stomach's still growling. <laughs> Five months, your stomach growling. They're like, wait a second, we've been, we've been talking about this for the past. Mm -hmm. but th <laughs> That's why we have to sound the alarm. And be unapologetic. Or where you it's, it's where you're going feeding you. Yeah. Have you noticed a have you noticed growth? Have you noticed something that has inspired, encouraged you, pushed you to do something different? Yeah. If not, it's time to check and see if you actually in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You've been going to the same restaurant every day for a week and you losing weight. Somebody go question, hey brother, you, you sure you've been going to a restaurant? Mm -hmm. You sure you've been going out to eat? You sure you've been eating? It's food in your house. Verse 17. Because thou sayest that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art rich and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They don't even know it. They don't even recognize it. They, 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 they think that they have everything. But it says that they are poor and have nothing. Rich and miserable and blind. Rich and miserable and blind. Look at Mark verse 4. Because we want to break this down. Still talking about getting there to fire. Talking about the church of Laodicea. Talking about living in the book of Revelation. We, the book of Revelation is not a far, uh, the book of Revelation rather is not a far off theme. It's, it's actually right now. And there are some things that God has called us to sound the trumpet. Mark 4, verses 18 and 19. And these are they. It's talking about the parable of the seed and the sower. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, thorns, such as hear the word. So they heard it. Church of Laodicea, the sea and the Luke watch it. They heard the word. There's people right now, they know the word. But it's not active, it's not alive, it's not living, it's not sharpening any to it, or able to discern. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Deceitfulness of riches. And other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful. One of the things that the Church of Laodicea, which is today, Luke Walter, they, they, they point to things as God being with them. You ever see people point to things, I'm blessed because I don't have, you know, I, I got everything the Lord provides. And so I always say that if blessing were all monetary, then the stripper, the dope boy, the gangster, everybody's blessed. If that were the only criteria for being blessed is looking in the bank account and seeing a bunch of zeros, I was blessed without the Lord then. If we want to term it blessed. But that's not blessed. That's not prosperity. So, But it was the, the deceitfulness of riches. Why is riches deceitful? Because it can fool people to thinking that they're all right. They're thinking that I'm okay. I'm good. I, you know, I, <laughs> I want for nothing. That's why Jesus said it's harder for a man, a rich man, to enter to the eye of a needle than to enter to the kingdom of heaven. 
easier rather for a, a rich man to enter into the eye of the, the, uh, the kingdom of uh, kingdom of heaven. Why? Because it's not so much that God is concerned about having things. It's when those things have us. I want us to remember that because there are some things going on today that the enemy has attached to money and people are making decisions based not upon their spiritual conscience, not upon, not based upon what it is that God would have them to do, but based upon, I'm going to keep this job. It's a test. Notice that the claim to be rich was a self-proclamation, not an acknowledgement of God. Some people will view all rich people or people with things as rich. Prosperity is not just about money. How many know there's rich people blowing their brains out? There's rich people in torment. There's rich people. I say rich because rich is not prosperity. We could be rich and not prosperous. No relationship. No relationship with God. That's our wealth. I've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul behind it. Everybody that had uh, that left here, they left it all. Clinging to it like the, a bear hug when they was here. But as soon as that breath, last breath drew from their uh, body, they had to leave it. They ain't, get, ain't no debit cards up in heaven. You ain't getting up there on Jesus. Now, where the debit card is? I know I left about two million down there. Ooh. So I'm going to get me um, some. Well, y'all got some angel cake up here. I know. I need to buy. No, that ain't going to happen. In heaven. It's either, well done, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me. I never knew you. Happiness is temporary. It's a temporary emotion that is dependent upon people, places, things. But joy is a constant provider of strength regardless. You can have joy in the worst of circumstances. I've had joy in the midst of turmoil and, and, and trials and tribulations. I've had a joy. I've had a, a praise. Uh, like, uh, like the brother saying, there's a praise on the inside <laughs> that I can't keep to myself. And so that's what joy is. That's why praise confuses the enemy. The enemy wants your joy to be dependent upon your circumstances. But when your joy and your praise and your worship is not dependent upon circumstances, but solely dependent upon your position in God, the enemy got a problem. You try to shake up some stuff, but when you're solid in the Lord, it doesn't matter. Deceitfulness of riches. This is talking about someone who they, they, they heard the word and it started out and it said and it became unfruitful. That means at one point they were bearing fruit in their life, but then they allowed some things to come in. The deceitfulness of riches. Blind and can't see. In this verse, in, 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 in Revelation, it talks about, let's go back. Still in Revelation 3, but then we're going <coughs> to go back to the current verse. Revelation 3 and 14, looking at <coughs> verse 18, actually. I counsel thee to buy gold of me, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, <coughs> that thou mayest be clothed, <coughs> and that thy shame or thy nakedness do not appear. <clears throat> and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve. Way back then they had this thing, eye salve, it would, it would cure bacteria, it would cure uh, any type of ailment they put in an eye, so it would, it would act as a healing agent to see. So what Jesus is talking about in the book of Revelation, the healing, the eye salve, it comes from the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us see, help us discern. Help me. That's why Jesus said, of riches increase, the word of God says, of riches increase, set not your heart on them. We want millions of dollars, but not for the same reason that other people want millions of dollars. We want millions of dollars, not so that we can get 10, 25 Cadillacs and a big mansion. No, we want more millions so that we can help more people. There's a war that's being waged. There, there's, there's a battlefield. There, there's, there, there's things that are being uh, waged on people's lives, and the battle is for people's soul. So who better than the children of God, children of the kingdom of God, to have the millions of dollars, in some cases billions? But there's a temptation that comes with that. Now, because I got the billions, I can't be on the Cayman Islands on a golf course five days a week 
I still got work to do. That's a temptation. People that say, oh, I won't be tempted. Yeah, you got to just go ahead and just travel. Yeah? That's a temptation. Lord, help me to not do that. Help me to see. <clears throat> help me to see. <clears throat> so, go to 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. <clears throat> Still talking about Church of Laodicea and lukewarm because they don't discern the times. They don't understand what's going on. In no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Jesus said that there's coming a day and the day is now that they're going to call evil good and good evil. They're going to make it sound so good. It's so good. It, it, it's, 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 it's the best thing since slides. It, it's going to help you. <clears throat> Transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, well, I'm saying got ministers. Yes, he does. And they're not all in the church. They're everywhere. A minister is meeting the need. A minister is to deceive you into thinking that it's something that it's not. That's what a minister of darkness, minister is also to be transformed as ministers of righteousness. Ministers of righteousness. We think, hey man, that's, man, that's teeny, man, that's teeny. Oh. Then I ask for some eye salve to see in the spirit realm. Oh man, that's John Wilson. He got a bit. You better ask for some eye salve. <laughs> Spiritual anointing to be able to see and to hear what it is that is being said. No matter what it is. Because one of the tricks of the enemy is people getting getting people distracted. Be sober, be vigilant. Therefore, there's no great thing that his minister be transferred as trans, transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Their works are going to be their end. <clears throat> Let's look at Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified 28. <clears throat> and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or consider him worth knowing <clears throat> as their creator God gave them over to a depraved mind to do things which are improper and repulsive until they were filled, permeated, saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, mean-spiritedness. They are gossips, spreading rumors, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of new forms of evil, <laughs> disobedient, and disrespectful to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, without pity. Although they did know, although they know God's righteous decree and his judgment, that those who do such things deserve death, yet not only do them. But they even enthusiastically approve and tolerate others who practice them. Still talking about the church of Laodicea. Still talking about the church being the light. Still talking about speaking for Christ. 
I look at all of these things, and it's sometimes, and uh, sometimes even just recently, me and Shante, we was dealing with some shysters. Me and Lady Brandon, we was dealing with some with the moving company. They come in and they they quote you one price, and then when you get there, they inflate the price and everything like that. And we get all mad and upset, but the world is going to do what the world is going to do. So what God is saying that this shouldn't catch you off guard. The things that are going on shouldn't be a shock to you. You 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 you're like well, how could they how could they get upset about them trying to pass a bill to save babies from being murdered? How how could somebody in government be upset about that? Said it right here. We think that the Book of Revelations is. Well, no, it's, 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 it's right here. Verse 32, yet not only do them, they even enthusiastically approve and tolerate others who Now that's not saying that we jump bad again in people's face. That's not unless the Holy Spirit calls us to do that. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. But he does call us to proclaim the word of God in all of the earth. In every circumstance, every situation, everything that we discern where there's evil pervading, we are the standard. When the Bible says, well, the Lord will lift, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up the standard. Guess who's his body and who's his standard? We are. I have people call me all the time asking me different questions about a litany of life uh, uh, situations and circumstances. Some I'm pastors, some I'm prophets. I give them my eyes is the word of God. I tell them I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm like the referee. The referee don't pick the rules. He just interprets the rules that are already written. I, I don't have a new rule or a new book or a new doctrine or anything. I just got the word of God. But just like I was saying earlier, the word of God has to be applicable to every single situation or circumstance that we face in life. There's an answer for everything. There is. <laughs> not doing it is not enough. It's just because I'm not involved. Well, you know, I don't, I don't do that. But uh, so that absolves me. No, that's the lukewarm child. I don't do it. So that's no, 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 no. We must disapprove and not tolerate what is being practiced. The church must have a voice. Passive believers are culpable. Want to know how? Let's look at Ezekiel. Trust me, I've been I've been cut off by family, went off on all of that stuff. So I hey man, <laughs> the Lord said it's gonna happen. So I guess I got. To I got to do what I got to do. I got to do what I got to do. <clears throat> Ezekiel 33, verses 1 through 7. Ezekiel 33, <clears throat> verses 1 through 7. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take not the warning. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Translating, I'm giving you a message. I'm giving you a warning message. I'm giving you a trumpet to blow. If you blow the trumpet and they won't hear and they shut their ears up, just like in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man shall be. He said, you don't know the day or the hour, but when the trees start to fall, the leaves start to fall, you know that it's coming nigh for winter. He said, no different than when we see certain things. So that's why I'm talking about eye salve. You got to be able to see in these times. Revelation is not a far off time. It's right now. It's right now. Everything that's going on is not by coincidence or happenstance. It is right now. But some people have not been able to discern it. But that's why I thought we are to be the trumpet. 
Verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Somebody's got a trumpet. They see danger coming. They don't blow the trumpet out of fear. Jeremiah, Lord, this is like fire shut up in my bone. This is not a popular method. This is not a good word. This is going to offend some people. He said, if you don't blow that trumpet, their blood is on your hands. If you don't warn people, their blood is on your hands. Whether they cut you off, don't talk to you no more, don't invite you, you, you still got that trumpet to blow. You're accountable to God for that trumpet. He's given us a trumpet. Verse 7, so thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Tell people this ain't my word. It's God's word. The moment you interject, I have an opinion, then everybody has an opinion. But when you bring it from the word of God, when you bring it from the unction of the Holy Spirit and you teach, no different than you driving in a car. Somebody going 80 in a 60 and you say, hey man, that sign says 60. They get back, why are you talking to me? I don't care about it. I'm driving 60. Listen, I didn't make the sign. But if you offended, it's offended because of the sign, the word of God, the light. I've been offended. People check me. Man, you know you're wrong. But make it on up by my face with that. But they ain't telling me nothing but was right from glory to God. I just didn't want to hear it. They had a trumpet to blow. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, talking about the Holy Spirit, capital S, that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Some shall depart from the faith. The enemy is trying to pull people away from the truth of the light of the word of God. Pull them away. Latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits, it's not, all, it's not all about sexual things. Seducing spirits are come to get you into thinking something other than what it is. Twisting. That's why it says he transforms his angels as ministers of light. Transform me and I, I'm not going to be able to easily recognize it. I'm not going to be able to easily hear it. I am if I am on my game as far as being in tune with the Holy Spirit and I can see. So that's what's going on. Doctrines of devil speaking lies and hypocrisy. A lot of hypocrisy going on today. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. To, to have a person's conscience seared with a hot iron means that there's no feeling. There, there's no, there's no record. You ever talk to somebody, it's like talking to a brick wall, and you can see exactly what it is that, that's going on, and you can see where it is that they're in danger, but it's like they're ta you're talking to a brick wall. They're not going to stop doing what they're doing because their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. We see people even in the church seared with a hot iron. The seducing spirits are not sexual. A seducing spirit is one to get you believe and do things by witchcraft. Witchcraft is by manipulation and control. And anytime you see manipulation and control, it's of the devil. If I have to seduce you to do something, if I have to bribe you to do something, if I have to force you to do something, that's witchcraft 101. So anytime you see, I don't care, no matter where it is, churches, our church in the world, anytime there's a forcing, a, 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 a bribing, a, 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 an encouraging of an evil kind, and they just won't leave the person alone, some people call it bullying, that's witchcraft. We think it's because they don't have a witch suit on, and they ain't around a cauldron, and 
they, they ain't cackling. They don't look like a Halloween movie that they're not a witch. No, there are witches and warlocks that wear suits and ties. There are witches and warlocks that sit in suits, that sit in front of TV cameras. There are witches and warlocks that sit and stand in pulpits. You got people that are, that are sitting that are, that are in the church and cast spells on people while they're there. You have to be discerning, have the eye sound. Come on, brother, let me let me lay hand. No, wait a second. Let me lay hand. No, no, you gotta have discernment. That's not to say that there's no greater than he than he that, that is in you than he that is in the world. But at the same time, God has given us discernment. No, I, I'm good. Don't pray over me. No. You tell them. That may be offensive to somebody. But you have a right to cover you and your household. You have, a, you have a charge to cover you and your household. The system is being tested today. I had this conversation with someone, another pastor, and he asked me about the mark of the beast and the system and the mark and you know what do you think is going on today I said I don't believe that the mark of the beast is here but I do believe that there are implications and there are things that are being done to get people to be conditioned to submitting to governmental authority take take let's take our eyes off of political parties let's take our eyes off of who's on TV let's take our eyes off of everything and let's look at this thing in the spirit realm and be able to discern what's really really going on I just told you that Manipulation and control can only come from the enemy. So let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. Book of Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. This is talking about the, the, the Antichrist, but we're talking about the beast. And one time when people talk about the beast and the beast system, they always think about it as something far off. They think about it as a person. No, the beast is a system. The mark of the beast is a system. It's a system. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and on their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Right now in, in, in Los Angeles and in, in, in New York and unfortunately in even some churches, they're making it a requirement for people to buy or sell or to work if they, if, for vaccination. It's not about the vaccination. I want you to take your eyes off of that. I want you to focus on the system that is being implemented. And think about what I just showed you in the book of Revelation. Because one of the things that the enemy as cunningly has got people to believe in, and they did it with Black Lives Matter, they did it when they were trying to pit white people against black people, and it really wasn't about black people and white people. If you look at BLM, and we did the study, and I showed you that BLM, there, there are witches at the top of it. The black and white thing was the premise on which they inserted what they were trying to do, and they were witches. They were Marxist communism that wants to destroy and divide America. Why? Because America is a Christian nation. Those of you who have been studies in the past know that America brings more money to evangelism. They bring more money to other Christian agendas. So if they want to take the economy, it's not about taking the economy. If they want to uh, attack the fact that we, we're trying to be a great nation, don't think of it as that, oh, we're prideful or, or, or some other agenda. No, it, it is exactly what's going on in the book of Revelation. But we, the enemy, people have, now they've, now they've done this, the vax against the unvax. They've done this separation. It's not about, it's about the agenda of the enemy. No man shall buy or sell. Doesn't that sound familiar? It's coming from the book of Revelation. Totalitary, totalitarianism is a form of government that attempts to assert control over the lives of its citizens. It is characterized by strong central rule that attempts to control and direct all aspects of individual life through coercion and repression. It does not permit individual freedom. What have people been saying? It's not about your freedom. 
Yes, it is about my freedom. Because the moment you can throw this brother right here, this is brother, the only one I've seen in Tampa. Maybe there's a few others that when they said, shut your church down, he said, I'm not shutting it down. Because my word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. There's a higher word. People say, well, you got to obey those who have rule over you. No, I beg to differ because Daniel didn't obey the decree of King Darius. You ain't going to pray to no other God. Daniel said, I'm going to open up these doors and I'm going to pray. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Bow down to this, uh, this image right now. Well, you know, the sweet by and by. Everybody doing it. It's, it's just the thing to do. No, that's a lukewarm church we're talking about in the book of Revelations of Laodicea. This man was arrested for a holy church under the guise of the premise of safety. I'm sorry, I don't need nothing but the Lord to keep me safe. Thank you. Amen. Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's it. Come on. But I want you to recognize one of the reasons why I put Hitler up here and the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I've been charged to sound the trumpet. Not just, in, not just on a Sunday, but in everywhere I can go and be and be in whether it be in political avenues, whether it be in the school board, no matter where it is, wherever there is a pushback, against the freedom of religion and the freedom of speech and the freedom of people to assemble, you can't use anything to stop us from praying. You can't use anything to stop people from holy church. I'm sorry, if you don't recognize that as the devil, we need some eye salve. Amen. Amen. I remember they sat and they asked me at the meeting. Sister Sheila was there. They asked me at the meeting, what did you do and what, did, what changed when the pandemic came? I said nothing. Would Jesus have stopped? Would Jesus have said, no, nah, I'm going to stay in my house in quarantine. I ain't going to witness to nobody today. I'm not going to lay hands on nobody today. Would Jesus have done that? No. So why are we going to do it today? Why are we going to allow people to separate people based upon status and race and medical status and all, all that stuff is under him. But there was a thing that it was your business is your business. No time since 2020, going back, was anybody ever able to ask you about your medical history? What you did, you would be like, no, nah, that's my business. I don't have to prove nothing to you, show you nothing. And even in schools, they will say, well, yeah, they had immunization. No, they always had a religious exempt. They always had a religious exempt that could say, no, nah, I, don't, I don't want that for my child. I don't want that for whoever. I put Hitler up there because one of the first things that they did in, in Nazi uh, Germany, and again, this is a study of history that ties in with the word of God. He got those people to believe that the things that he were implementing was good for him. He got them to acquiesce to control. He got them to acquiesce to this is the way it's supposed to be. Be system. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You see people talking about that is a well-known phrase in the United States Constitution. The phrase gives three examples of unalienable rights, which declaration says have been given to all humans by their creator. That's God. That's why God can only give you those rights and only God can take them away. Not man, not a government, not a, not a pandemic, not anything else. What is unalienable cannot be taken away or denied. It is most famous, its most famous use is the Declaration of Independence, which says unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want, to exp I want to expose some of the hypocrisy that is going on. And when I say hypocrisy, this, again, take, take the hats off because you got both a uh, uh, Democrat and Republican that, that are in on this. You got to find out who's a conservative, who's a Christians. Who are the believers? Who are the ones that actually believe and stand up for the word of God? Who makes that their, their, their standard? So, these people right here, the White House defends not requiring COVID tests for um, illegal immigrants. So there's been over, I'm just going to paraphrase so we can get moving. There's been over 208,888, excuse me, 887 migrants, give or take, that have come across the border since the beginning of the year. They're not requiring any of them to have a COVID test. You might say, well, that's kind of odd. Why would they require people in the United States? I want to expose to you the hypocrisy and the real true meaning behind everything that's going on so that we can see it in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they said was that it was all white 
uh, right wing Republicans that was refusing to get the vaccine. Come to find out 72% of black residents in New York don't want it. Black Lives Matter now, who was the one saying that somebody else was racist, is now coming against this Biden administration and saying, no, your, your, your policies, it's not about who's racist, who's not, who's pop. No, let's look at the policies and let's see how it affects the kingdom of God. Freedom. Leaders of Black Lives Matter, New York chapter, calls the vaccine racist and disrespectful. Not my words, their words. People are being, beginning to wake up and see. People are beginning to wake up and see. I said that to say this now. They're not allowing them to, they, they don't have to get a COVID vaccine when they, when they come over the border. But now, White House Press Secretary Jen, pa Jen uh, Psaki on Friday confirmed that the government is requiring COVID-19 vaccines for people, isn't, excuse me, keyword, isn't requiring COVID-19 vaccines for people who are legally crossing the uh, Mexican border, despite the president's new vaccine mandates for about two thirds of U.S. workers, does that make sense? No. no. That's correct. Uh, uh, Saki, whatever name is, told Peter Ducey facing the daily brief. Saki gave the curt reply when Ducey asked, "If it's a requirement for people at a business with more than a hundred people, is it not a requirement for mig migrants at the southern border? Why?" She didn't elaborate. Just before you think that these people are just staying at the border, no, they're actually taking them on charter buses and dropping them off all over the United States. So if it was really about safety and really about health, why would we allow 200,000, two, over 200,000 people coming to see the United States without a COVID vaccine, without a, uh, a requirement for them to even get tested and bring them into the United States if it was truly about safety and health? I got to blow the trumpet. I got to blow the trumpet because we have to see that it's not about what they're saying. The enemy poses himself as an angel of righteousness. An angel, I'm for your good. I'm here to help you. But if you were, this would make sense. It doesn't. If you leave the United States and come back in, guess what? You have to get a COVID test. You got a better chance of going over the Mexican border and not being bothered with than coming over, uh, 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 over on a plane or a ship or anything. Does that make sense? If it were about health and safety, it would be a blanket policy. If you were concerned about the COVID numbers and people getting sick, you wouldn't be allowing 200,000 200, people to come across the border with none of the stuff that you're requiring American citizens to get. We the people. People will say, well, you know, this time, no, 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 no. See, one of the things that people think that they're not coming for me, just like they came for Pastor Rodney Brown, and said shut it down because they gave so much leeway to the government the same way the same implementations and the same things are trying to be implemented right now. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with the strain holding and the taking of the rights. They want to muzzle the church. To be honest. It's spiritual. These people are elbow to elbow, neck to neck. Now remember, none of them have gotten this, uh, 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 a test or anything. So they're all in these breeding camps, but they want to tell you to stay six feet apart. They want to tell you if you can't, then you need to take a test before you go into their restaurants. But every last one of them are going to get out and go into society. Still talking about staying near the fire. I said all that to talk about the church today. The church that needs to wake up out of his stupor or slumber and thinking that some of these things are just going to blow over. Those are the things that we need to be standing and saying, you know what, I have a right to assemble. I have the right to gather with other believers. I have a right to certain unalienable rights that were given to me by God, not by the government, so the government can't take them away. I have a right to all of those things. And then question them. 
Wait a second, I just watched a celebration. They had a, 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 a some award show with a whole bunch of actors and actresses and nobody in the audience had to go through any of those COVID protocols. But in California, in New York, Just saying. At a time when strip clubs were still allowed to open. Yeah. Bars were open. You couldn't go to church. But it's about safety. Nobody in the, nobody in the bar in the club could get sick. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice, and I will open the door, and I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Most people equate this to salvation. He's actually still talking to the church of Laodicea, saying, I'm not even in the building. I said all that to say this earlier, what I was talking about, how I've been in churches, and it was just like, Everything, people getting knife stabbed on the corner. All, the world going to hell in the hand I didn't hear anything that applied to today. God brought me up in a different way. He says, I, I'm going to need you to sound the trumpet. I'm going to need you to talk about some stuff that's going on in the news. I'm going to need you to talk about some stuff that maybe people are a little bit uncomfortable talking about. Because we need to have a biblical worldview of it. Yeah. It's not even an opinion. It's a biblical worldview. Yeah. What does God want? What does Christ Jesus want in this day and time? He wants his church to still be the church. The Bible says, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. What rock? The revelation of who I am. Yes. Peter, you got it. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I'm going to build the church. And the gates of hell won't prevail against it. The gates of hell are the ones that are spewing the lies, trying to control, trying to dictate, trying to spew fear. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, fear, 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 fear. This many people died, this many people did, this many people died. I'm not going to live my life in fear. Amen. Not according to the dictates of man. The reason why I say this is because there's even places that won't even allow you in unless you got an ID. What that is in the Bible? Pastor, you mean to tell me I got to show an ID that I've been, I got something? In order to enter in, where that's at? And so now, who am I to be silent? Just like it said in the book of Ezekiel, if I won't blow the trumpet and there's three or four hundred people entering into that church, believe in that mess. Their blood is on my hand if I had an opportunity to say something, to shake somebody, to wake them up and say, no, nah, brother, you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. The very revelation, the very resurrection of God that raised Jesus from the dead, that raised Lazarus from the dead, that healed lepers, that healed, that healed the woman with the issue of blood. You got that on the inside of you. So if they're telling you that you need that in order to get in, I'm sorry, it's time for you to leave. Find you another church. Repetition versus relationship. It's not about the building. It's about the body. It's about the body of believers that believe. See, yeah. see, that's why it says iron sharpen iron. Hey, if you ain't iron, you can't sharpen no iron. You gotta have iron that sharpens iron. The Bible says that, that the Bible says that there's there's safety in a multitude of counselors, but I gotta see who you've been counseled by. Have you been counseled by the Holy Spirit? Have you been counseled by CNN or MSNBC? I got to see who you've been counseled by. Have you been counseled by the government? No, I got to be counseled by the Holy Spirit. Because guess what? There's going to come a time, there's going to come a day. If you look at this book of Revelation, there's going to be a separating line. And the time is now. Yeah, amen. If God be God, believe him. How long are we going to halt between two opinions? That's what Elijah said. I'm not going to halt between two opinions. God has already spoken. And I'm going to stand on that. Yes. Matthew chapter 6.
verses 1 through 8. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the Amplified. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Be very careful not to do your good deeds publicly to be seen by men. Otherwise, you have no reward prepared and awaiting you with your Father who is in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not blow a trumpet before you to advertise as the hypocrites do, like actors acting out a role in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored and recognized and praised by men. I assure you and do and most solemnly say to you that, excuse me, they are already have their reward in full. Means I don't do things in front of man to be seen by man. I just do it because God said to do it. And whether someone catches it or don't catch it, that's what the Bible tells us to do. But when you get to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and give in complete secrecy. But it has to know what we're giving or what we're doing and how we're doing and unless we're encouraging others, hey brother I'm going over here to meet with these people, would you come along, or, hey we're doing this event, that's different, but I'm talking about just dropping stuff to let people know, well you know I gave so and so such and such and I, and I blessed this person with this and I did that, that's got to say, no, that you've all, now, now you've got your reward, you got your reward from that person so that your charitable acts will be done in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray publicly standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen. I assure you and most solemnly say to you that already they already have their reward. But when you pray, go in the innermost private room, close the door, and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Meaningless repetition, going through the motions. Now, people, church, week after week after week after week, month after month, no growth. Meaningless repetition. They, they pray loud and not dance, shout, do all that stuff. Meaningless repetition. Power. Today is a day where God says, I'm pushing my church out into the forefront so they can see the power of my resurrection. Repetition and no power. We see people get repetition, uh, open for people, church open for years. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Round and round and round, no power. No power, no conviction, no, 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 no voice. Prophets didn't stop prophesying because the Bible, the, the Bible was closed up. They, they, they're still prophets today. They're still evangelists today. They're still ministers today. There are still people that are going out on the highways and the bicycles. By the way, people haven't stopped talking to government officials. People haven't stopped speaking out against what's going wrong in the world. People haven't stopped speaking out. There's been a silencing that is unpopular to go against certain things and the same thing. But when you stand for God, get out of the, get out of the arena of public opinion. Get out of the arena of what's popular. What, no, no, no. Go by the word of God and God will give you an unction. Now, not something's wrong. That's why I pointed out what I pointed out as the Holy Spirit would lead me as I was looking at these things. These things just didn't add up. And in a day and a time when we could lock a pastor up for opening his doors, but let Susie get on the pole. But the church, well, well, I ain't gonna say nothing because you know that's just the way it is. And people just need to be in their house and just be quiet and don't say nothing because this thing will blow over. No, it won't. Nice. Not unless the church stands up and says something. Not unless the church says, no, we're not, we're gonna assemble. Come hell or high water. Imagine if Shad Rabbi Shack and Abednego said, well, it's bowing to this statue, just go blow over. Let's just keep bowing until one day the decree, it go away. Well, I, they told me not to pray. My name Daniel, they told me not to pray. I'm just going to wait till it blow over. So I'm going to just go ahead and just not pray to my God. No. 
That's going to blow over. Because we've seen in the book of Revelation the plan. We're not ignorant of his devices. And this is not a it's not a oh let's be scared. No, 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 no. This is the exciting time. Yes. Just like God told Esther for such a time as this were you born into the kingdom. My Lord. For such a time as this, he chose you to be in this generation with all of this going on, to have your voice at this time. He deemed you worthy to be his church in the earth for such a time as this. That's an honor and a privilege. I get excited. We ought to be excited and recognized. So, so in closing, we recognize that the church of Laodicea, yes, that, that's going on and that's happening there. So that, it, it talks about people that are asleep, people, people, people that are dull and, 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 and numb to the things that are going on. But then there's a people, there's an awakening. They talk about the great awakening. There's going to be a revival in America. There's, this, this is not going to go over and people just going to go off to sleep. No, there's going to be a revival in America. Some of those same people that you see with them Black Lives Matter, they gathering together with Christians because they're seeing the tyranny in the government. Guess what's going to happen according to God's plan? It's going to come together where those people start rubbing together and those people start getting in the line and they're going to start laying hands on folk, praying over people and them same Marxists, them same evil enemy. They're going to be receivers of Jesus Christ. That is the plan and purpose of God. That is the plan and purpose of God. That is what God would have. Some of those same people who people tried to pit with you black and I'm white, and they tried to separate folk according to that. They're going to see through the schemes of the enemy that it wasn't about that. They tried to paint one president as racist and this one and then one I looked at the news the other day and I just said, and it's not even about that, but I want people to see through the policies. The last president approved for $2,250 million for HBCUs for the next 10 years, the most of any president in the history of the United States. The president that they said one racist said 45 billion too much. It was 250 billion for 10 years. 45 billion too much. I'm gonna give y'all two billion. Now the same people, the, 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 the HBCU corporations and everything, they pounding on the desk. I thought you was for us. Angel of light. Angel of light. Stop looking at titles. Stop looking at what's in front of that name. Democrat or Republican, you better look at what their policies are. You better look at where they stand for Christ. You better look at whether or not they say they are Christian, but do they practice Christianity? I don't care if you walk upside in the church. There's plenty of devils go inside of the church. That's not a criteria. When he go to church, I thought he went his family. I wouldn't care if he went there 20 years in a row. The Catholic Church, who he was a part of, is now condemning him because he's Huh? No. The Catholic Church. I was talking too loud. Well, you're good. Oh. Keep on. Who, 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 who was touting him is now condemning him because he's pro-abortion, pro-killing babies. This isn't about politics. We know that God is against abortion. If God is against abortion, then I'm against abortion. And anybody that's against it, just like the word of God said, either I'm going to be in support of it or in opposition of it. There's no middle part. So if I got to stand up in his face and tell him you're dead wrong, you're dead wrong, and I'm going to go against any policy that you implement yes. that got to do with the killing of innocent life. Yes. LGBTQ, RZ, LMLB. <laughs> I got to be against that too. And I have to allow the light of God to shine in darkness. I have to allow the light of God to shine in darkness. being close to the fire. Being close to the fire is allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that he needs to do in your life so that we can be the light amongst darkness. People don't need us to take the side. They need us to take the Lord's side. When you're on the Lord's side, you separate all of that other foolishness. Who are you for? What are you for? What are you getting? No, no, I'm on the Lord's side. Whatever. What does the Lord say about the matter? What does God say? 
And so in that, God is calling us to that fire so that we can burn. So that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. There is a remnant. There is a remnant of believers that are pushing back against mandates, that are pushing back against the unconstitutional uh, uh, things that are going on. I'm one of them. So at this time, if anybody does not know the Lord, 